Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Sonic Roll. This is made by Kess, and it's designed by Anthony Thorpe. Play as Sonic and friends as you traverse iconic zones from classic Sonic games and save the woodland creatures the evil Dr. Eggman has captured. Use character unique abilities to roll dice and take out obstacles in these heroes' path. Place dice to run through zones, collect rings, and defeat the bad nicks that stand in your way. Complete enough challenges to finish the zone and face off against Eggman himself. Let me show you how to play. So in Sonic Roll, you are trying to uh, defeat Eggman and you have to complete these zone cards. Um, and so each character has different abilities. I'll go into them, but first I'm just gonna kind of show you the general flow of the game. So uh, first on your turn, you do what's called a roll action step. So if you look at this Sonic uh, character here, Sonic character as if you don't know who this is. So these are three different uh, roll actions that Sonic can do, like super peel out. So let's say I pick that one. You take the dice shown on the card and you roll them. Now super peel out has a thing that says roll, discard the lowest result in your dice pool. So in this case, one is my lowest, so that one would get discarded. Once I have my dice pool, now I can do the spending step. So I have to use these dice one at a time by placing them on a bad nick or a zone card. So, looking at these zone cards here, you can see on the ends, uh, this one says six, four, blue four, five, and blue five. So actually, uh, all of these uh, are not good because <laughs> none of them work. But let's say, uh, pr let's pretend I had rolled, let's say a blue five. I could place it here or here. This one specifically needs a blue five, so I'll put it there. When you put a, a dice down, uh, you get the reward, in this case, it's three rings. Once you spend a dice, then you have to take the rest of the dice and roll them again. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention, uh, with blue dice, I can, I'll can i go into it later. Uh, I had the option to play more, but that's fine. So, I go again. Uh, this time I have a blue six, if I wanted. Uh, I could put it down here on the six, and I would get a boost token. Now at any point, if I want to, uh, even if, if I have dice left, I can choose to end my turn and skip to the end turn phase, uh, or I can keep going. Um, so uh, let's go into why rerolling might be dangerous. Bad Nick cards will come out. Uh, we'll get into that later. Um, but those can potentially hurt you depending on what you roll. Um, that's why these boost tokens are useful because these can be used to reroll your dice pool. So now let's go into the different dice properties. Blue dice are called run dice, and these are convenient because you can actually keep spending them without having to re-roll your pool. This is what I was kind of mentioning before. So, for example, if I had these dice, I could go, oh, I'm gonna place a three, a two, and a three. And I could keep going. Normally with other dice, you have to re-roll each time. But blue dice can kind of chain like that and each time I would get a different reward or penalty. We'll go into these symbols in a second. Jump die, uh, whenever you spend one of these, you immediately gain a ring. Rings are useful because they can protect you. Red spin dice are useful for bad nick cards. Uh, bad nicks, these are ways to kill bad nicks. They're very useful for that. We'll get into that later. And then there are hazard dice. These are rolled whenever you have to get one of, like, one of these hazard penalties. Uh, and what happens is you roll that die uh, and if it matches any of the dice in your dice pool, then you will take damage. So with the dice placement in the zones, how it works is basically you can pick any of the three zones. However, uh, you have to uh, start from left to right. And also, if I choose a path, like you can see here, the kind of branches, I if I go here, I gotta stick with that path. This is a cooperative experience, so with whatever dice is left here at the end of my turn will stay here because we're all putting the dice on the zone cards. Now some cards have bumpers, like this one. This means uh, if I place a dice here, then the next, the bumper die has to match whatever this was. So then this would have to have a three. So let's kind of go over what some of these rewards do. Um, this is a power up. Power ups are useful. You can draw one of these. This one's an invincible, for example. Damage, discard one die and ignore damage. Uh, discard it end of turn. So uh, some useful cards, I'll show you just a couple others. Uh, hyper ring. Held rings are worth 15 points. Damage, keep half of held rings, round it up and discard this card. Fire shield, uh, spend. Spend a die of any color on a challenge that requires red dice once per turn. Shields are also useful in that uh, you can use them to block damage. 
Um, however, you can only have one of these shields at a time. If you draw another one, you have to choose one to keep and discard the other. I mentioned rings before. Uh, some of them have bad things, like this uh, Eggman symbol makes you draw bad Nick cards, which I mentioned earlier. Bad Nick cards, uh, you, you draw one for yourself, and then you have to pick one for uh, one of your teammates. So if uh, what this bad Nick card means is when it's your turn and you re-roll your, re your dice, not on your initial roll, but when you re-roll, if you roll, in this case, a yellow five or a yellow four, you will take damage. We'll get into damage in a second. To kill this guy, I would need to roll a red six. If I do, I get a small, an I free the small animal. Uh, I could also roll a blue six just to run away from it, and it would get discarded anyway. But these guys stay in front of you uh, when they are placed there. And this also says, when you, whenever you roll one or more hazard dice, roll that many plus one. So these guys are pretty annoying. This is the time tokens. Uh, if you take one of these, it's a penalty, you have to take one of these, uh, and if you run out of these, it's game over. This, or this, is the, uh, the goal thing. Uh, if you have at least five rings on you, you save them, uh, meaning they'll be scored at the end of the game, and then if you can play uh, the bonus stage. So, uh, and you have to save all your rings, you can't choose to save only five of them. Um, so there's that. Uh, the bonus game. There's a lot of me saying we'll get to that later, but we will get to that later. Um, the big ring just lets you go straight to the bonus game. Uh, let's see, this one makes you discard a die from your dice pool. So they all do different effects. Some of them good, some of them bad, and it kind of depends on, you know, if you take the easy way or the hard way. When you finish a zone, you take the card and put it in front of you, and you receive the reward for that act. So you can see big ring, goal post, power up. And then you would draw a new card uh, to replace it. And remember, you're trying to go through all of these um, to get to the boss phase. So let's go into how damage works. So uh, one way that you can take damage is if you do a reroll and you can't spend a die because none of them work, you take damage and then your, uh, your spending phase ends. Damage, if you have any rings, you lose all your held rings. Um, however, if you don't have held rings, uh, then you lose one of your lives, just like in Sonic. You'll discard any bad nicks in front of you and any dice left, your turn is now over. If you run out of lives, it's game over and all of you lose. So remember, there are three different ways you can take damage. Uh, if you can't spend a dice, if you get attacked by a bad nick, uh, or if a hazard die matches a result in your dice pool. However, if you take damage on your turn, you are invulnerable and you cannot take any other damage until you re-roll or spend a die. So you can't like combo, wombo combo and just fuck you up. Now let's go into this bonus stage. So whenever you have it five rings and hit a goal post or get the big ring, you can play the bonus stage and you're trying to find a chaos emerald. So let's say I pick this tile. This is a bumper. So I get the reward, that's one ring and I can continue. Okay, I'm gonna pick this one. Ooh, that's a red, uh, red one. So. Uh, the game ends, I do get this power-up card, uh, and these cards will, or tiles will stay flipped for the next player. Let's say I eventually find it, let's see, how, how long, what? you know, it's funny, when I was playing this, I actually found it in one shot before. Okay, where are ya, where are ya? Okay, well, there it is, there's the Chaos Emerald card. If you get a Chaos Emerald card, you draw one, and this gives you a power. This one gives you a yellow die and a red die, if you clear a challenge, replace its reward with a power-up. Um, so you can choose to exhaust this uh, and use the ability. I went through some of the power-ups and some of the shields. Uh, okay, before we get into the boss fight, let me show you some of the uh, other abilities for the other characters. Well, first off, Sonic, his whole thing is insta-shield. Avoid, you can exhaust his uh, shield token to change a blue die into a red die and also change his result by one. He can also do a spin dash as his roll action. In this case, you roll a blue and red die over and over until two results match. And drop dash, uh, it's three yellow die. Spend one yellow die to gain a blue die if spent on a zone card. Uh, so that's Sonic. Tails has buddy flight. Uh, any player may spend a yellow die. Uh, they can lower the result of this die by an amount, then change the result of spent die by that amount. So it's like you put a die that says two here and you can use those as sort of like flexibility points. 
He also has fly, four yellow die, save matching Paris, discard the rest, you, and you roll two times. If no Paris, just save one die, discard the rest. Spin jump, uh, spend a red die to gain a yellow die if spent on a bad nick. And propeller tail, uh, reroll, gain a yellow die if two or more dice were spent since the last reroll. Um, so that's tails. Knuckles has a secret passage. He has his own passage card that he can like put dice on. Uh, and if it, you complete it, you get a, a big ring. Uh, so he has more flexibility of dice placement. Wall climb, you roll three times. You get to save a die as long as its result is higher than the last saved die. And you discard all the unsaved ones. Spin attack, uh, avoid. You may change all blue die into red die. And glide, spend a yellow die. You may spend another yellow die without re-rolling if its result is lower than the last spent die. And finally, Amy. Uh, Amy has the Pico Pico Hammer. She can spend a red die and raise the result of the spent die by one. Six will change to a one. Hammer throw, spend red die. Uh, may spend as if it was any result on any player's bad nick once per turn. Spend dash, that's the same as Sonic. And hammer rush, spend a yellow die and gain a red die if spent on a zone card. So those are the different characters and you're trying to go through all these zone cards. Now, once you get through all the zone cards, um, or actually, I think it's when you run out of zone cards, you can't replace one. Then it's time to set up the boss fight. So, you flip this over, and there are multiple zones, obviously, that you can play, uh, to this. Then, you deal out boss pattern cards equal to the boss's level. So, th this boss's level is two. Now, I'm not 100% sure I'm doing this right, because the rule book is very vague. But I'm pretty sure what you do is you set them up like this. The reason why it's confusing to me is some of them have connecting things and some, no, I guess they all kind of do. Anyway, I'm pretty sure, I'm like 99% sure this is the right way to play. And if not, well, it's on the rule book. Uh, so this boss uh, needs to be hit two times. Um, also, whenever this boss is hit, all players draw a bad nick. He also has a boss attack card uh, that goes in front, it moves in front of every player as if it's a bad nick. Uh, in this case, it's um, whenever you do a dice action, discard a die with the high, highest result. Uh, when you roll boot three, you take damage. To uh, sort of escape him, you use yellow six, but then it flips to this one, uh, which does a different thing. So, in order to score a hit on the boss, you must remove the boss pattern cards blocking that route. Uh, you can see these are similar to the other ones, and they usually have a hard route and an easy route, and the easy routes usually come with penalties. So, um, when you clear uh, a card, um, you discard it. So if I got the yellow five on this and placed it, I would be one step closer to a hit. So once I complete all the boss cards, then if I place a red two here, bam. That is a hit, and the die placed will stay there. You take one of these animal tokens to show that you got a hit on, uh, and then uh, I believe what happens is the boss, all the routes reset. Yes, all the routes will refill with boss pattern cards, uh, and you'll shift any that are already, already there to the left, and you just do it again um, until you hit him a second time. Uh, so that is the boss phase. You beat the boss, then you do scoring at the end, I'm not gonna go through all this. Essentially, it's basically, here's a little thing. It's just, you count your speed, basically how many uh, zones you beat. You can't, if you took time token, that's minus one speed, and then you score points for that. You also get points for all the rings you held and saved, animal tokens, uh, get minus points for deaths, also chaos emeralds. If you used it versus not using it, you get points. Uh, that I don't really care about. It's semi-co-op stuff. I really, this game is so hard that, <laughs> You're, if you're focusing on winning it and not helping the team, I, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, you roll your dice, you try to go through the zones, get, fulfill them without uh, losing your lives, and uh, get to the boss and beat them. And that's the game. So this one is interesting. I think presentation-wise, it looks great, and clearly there was a lot of actual care put into not just how it looks, but also making it feel thematic. The co-op is fun. I do like the characters' individual abilities. They all feel, you know, different and thematic to the characters. The power-ups are a lot of fun, and my favorite thematic element is actually the bonus stage. It's very simple, but I love searching for that Chaos Emerald. It all has a very strong Sonic flavor that is very charming. However, 
This game is way too long and a little too finicky. It's also weirdly overly punishing. Like you are constantly getting these bad nit cards, which are irritating because they make the game finicky because you have to always check when you roll, oh wait, what's their abilities? Oh, okay, wait, oh, if I roll this, I get hit. Um, just every time you do a bad nick penalty, not only do you get one, but someone else gets one. And it's it's just like relentless. I don't mind difficulty in a co-op game, but I do mind when it gets overly annoying to manage with upkeep. And that's what happens with when you have like three bad nicks. Okay, well, uh, check the numbers. Oh, okay, this one hits me, blah, 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 blah. It's a pain in the ass. And then this game is a lot of, like has a lot of little exception rules, like bad decks can only attack a die that's being re-rolled, or if you take damage, you ignore damage until you re-roll. It's too fiddly for what is essentially just roll your dice, try to get, get them in the right spots. And that's kind of where the problem lies. This is a dice placement game that's very dependent on lucky rolls. Like if you saw in the, the you know my sort of explanation of the game, I just happened to roll the dice and completely whiffed, right? Yeah, you have a little bit of wiggle room with some abilities, but not a ton. So even though this game presents you with like, oh, do you want to take the easy route or the hard route in the zone? Oftentimes, you don't really have a choice. Uh, you just have to kind of place it to place it. Because if you don't place a die, you'll take damage. And sure, yeah, you might get protected by rings, but you lose all of them when you get hit. Obviously, you know, that's Sonic themed, but still. Rings, you, you have to be lucky enough to get the rings. You only get the rings by using yellow die or the rewards. And if you don't have the rings and just happen to roll bad, you're kind of fucked. Um, the boss fight is also, I feel like, a little overly complicated. In fact, I, I, I'm like 99% sure I played it right, but the rule book is a little vague. So, overall, I can only recommend this to Sonic fans. Because I do think it's a great, you know, Sonic theme. But only the Sonic fans that are into slightly heavier games. I really think this should have been simplified. Simplified and ironically sped up for breezier gameplay. It takes way too long to play. Uh, it's just right in the middle of accessible and complex. And I can see like an average Sonic fan who doesn't play board games or is new to board games picking this up because the cover is really cool. And just being like, oh, it just, this is kind of a pain in the ass to play so i'm very mixed i think there was a lot of care put into it uh i don't think i can recommend it though to anyone who, unless you're like a diehard sonic fan and just be prepared it's a long one and a little finicky